Welcome to Channel Data Chaos. Today we're going to learn one feature which is available in almost all programming languages which is known as the array. Now we'd like to start with a definition. So array is collection of elements of same data type. Now to explain you this definition it's best to start with an example. So assume there's a class. A class is full of students and each student has a unique roll number. Now, roll number is one entity, but the thing is, every student has got a different roll number. Roll number one, two, and so on, right? But it's the same thing. Roll number is one thing, but every student has got a unique one. Now, for example, in programming, I type in integer roll number. So, what we are saying there is, it's, there's a variable where we can store a value right this is an integer so it's a variable where you can store a value now this thing can only store one value in it for example roll number one I can only store one in it what if I have an entire class of students I'm not going to go and create integer roll number two and so on I have to have a convenient way to do this so there's one yeah which is the array what we do is just in front of our variable we just put these brackets these are the square brackets okay you have to put these brackets if not it's not going to be detected as an array it will give you an error and so on so make sure you give an squared bracket now inside these brackets we specify how much amount of roll number we want for example if a class is of 32 students so I can have 32 different roll numbers of the same type do keep in mind this is the same type it's a variable this is not a constant it's not a character it's just an variable an integer variable so there you go you have got 32 elements available for you alright but the thing is if you insert 32 over here you will have 33 elements why is that because an array the index of an array starts from a zero. That's just in all programming languages the, the index of an array starts from a zero. So there's zero, one, two, and so on. So this would be whatever value you put in here plus one. So there's thirty three spaces for you to insert a roll number. It's that simple. So this is how conveniently you can specify an element of the same data type but it's a collection of it. See, this is a collection of elements of the same data type. It's that simple. Now, the only difference between a single variable and an array of variables is the storing and accessing methods for that variable. Now, if this would be just, let's say, row number, the way we would access it, we, we would store it, is in the following way that's how we would store it, see in roll number, so it would just accept one variable but now the thing is we have got 32 of them so we need to specify in which of those 32 elements where we want to store it for example if I specify 16 so then it will store into the 16th element of the array so that is something to keep in mind but nobody does it this way because it's very hectic because if I want to store let's say five different roll numbers so I would have to do a CM then again type all that crap and then specify another number so what we do is use something called the loop now if you don't know what's a loop you will need to watch another tutorial there would be there are many of them in YouTube so just check out what's a loop and then continue this tutorial but I'm gonna just clear your basic concepts about loop loop is basically a thing there where we perform a task multiple times alright a task that gets performed multiple times is called as a loop now there are multiple types of loops so I'm just gonna use the one that is used for accessing or storing the array which is the for loop alright this is the basic things that you should know by now if you don't don't worry just check out a video and you would be a tutorial obviously and you should be alright. So this is how you do it. 
alright so I've typed in the for loop now to store the values inside that array all you need to do is type in cn and the name of the array which is roll number and specify i inside it so now what we are doing is i starts with an zero i goes up to five and it gets plus plus every time the loop ends so we are able to store five values inside this array now you can store up to 32 why because over here as you can see we have specified 32 as the capacity now this is the capacity of this array right so if I type in 32 and I type in over here 33 the program would run but would not store the 33rd element because there is no such thing as the 33rd element for having the 33rd element we would need to specify over here 33 or higher we can even specify 50 and put it over 33 so this is the capacity and this is how much we want to reach right if you know what is a for loop you would understand this in a jiffy so alright now we have scanned all the variables all 33 of them I'm going to decrease this to 5 because it would be a huge program then I'm going to type in the basic C out for enter roll number semicolon in the front alright so I run it so now as you can see it's asked me for the roll number so I just type in 1 now normally what it would happen the program would exit right now but as we are using a loop it would continue until the loop has been finished so 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 as you can see we could enter 5 values inside as we have specified over here alright so that's the way you store and if you want to access those what you just type in C out rather than C in name of the array and with the index height it's that simple so that's how you store and access an array using a loop so this has been just the basic concept which is an array so array again is a collection of data of the same data type if it's an integer it stays an integer it will not change the character whenever you want it won't work that's it's that simple it is a really convenient way to have multiple elements of the same data type so anyway this has been a channel of the chaos i hope you like this video rate comment and subscribe thank you very much